Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. It is Friday, only one day to go until we get to see Graham Potter's Chelsea playing on the field once again. Leicester City away tomorrow in the Premier League, but we've got two more videos to go through before you guys get your Leicester preview. If you want to check the Leicester preview, it will be out very early as the cat decides to involve herself again in the morning tomorrow before the three o'clock kickoff today. In this video, we're talking Bruno Guimaraes, we're talking Tammy Abraham, we're talking Mason Mount, we're talking Goncalo Ramos of Benfica, Victor Osimhen, and then a sentimental story to wrap up this video regarding the news of Eden Hazard's Real Madrid departure, and I think you know where we're going to go with it, so stay tuned to the end. To find out what I have to say there, we are creeping towards a quarter of a million Chelsea fans here on the channel, so if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoy the news videos. The first story is regarding Bruno Guimaraes. Luke Edwards, I think from The Telegraph, has reported that Chelsea inquired about signing Bruno in January and are likely to be back again in the summer. First things first, I think this would be a phenomenal piece of business from Chelsea for a couple of reasons. The first one, which is surface layer reason, Newcastle will be competing with Chelsea in the upcoming years. Second thing, Look at how Newcastle have done this season when they've had Bruno in the team and without Bruno in the team. So to me, that just goes to show that for a team that are challenging for the Champions League, for a player's involvement and importance in the side to be that obvious tells me that there's a serious player there that they've got on their hands. And the third reason is... I think a midfield of Bruno Guimaraes and Enzo Fernandez would be absolutely magnificent. So I think there's a great piece of balance in there. You've got Argentina and Brazil, and then you've also got Andre Santos in the mix as well to add in for the future. There's just, I don't know, something about it. I know the reasons I've given aren't probably the best, but what Bruno does so incredibly well is he can sit and play the passes the same way that we've seen Enzo Fernandez always forward thinking passes. And I think what Chelsea could do by having both of these there is teams don't really know what they're going to come up against if you've got a midfield two of Enzo and Bruno. Both can sit, both can go forward a bit more. And in the final third, both can be absolutely lethal, lethal with those final balls into the box. The reason I don't think this will happen, and I won't go into it much more in this video, is because only recently Bruno Guimaraes came out in an interview saying that he wants to be a big part of writing the new history of Newcastle United. So when a player's coming out and saying that, yes, players have come out and said things before and then they've just decided to leave, but I think Newcastle will definitely offer Bruno something special considering just how important he is to that team. With the current rebuild that they're going through, they're falling off a little bit at the moment, but Bruno believes that Newcastle will be in and around the Champions League places for many seasons to come. The next story that I wish to discuss today is regarding Mason Mount and interest from Manchester United. Jacob Steinberger said, Mason Mount is emerging as a summer target for Manchester United, whose priority remains a move for Harry Kane. Stay tuned later on this evening in the UK for a video talking about that bloke. Mount is increasingly likely to leave Chelsea and is a cheaper target than Jude Bellingham. Liverpool are also in for the CFC midfielder. At the moment, the rumours have been that Mason Mount has recently rejected a £180,000 per week contract. He was offered something along the same lines as what Rhys James is being paid by Chelsea for his new contract that he recently signed. Mount's rejected it. At the minute, I think this is only going one way. Chelsea will be forced to cash in on Mount this summer. And considering there is going to be just a year left on that contract come this summer, the talks at the minute are about something along the lines of 50 million quid, which, when we know how good Mount can be, it seems as though Chelsea will be shorted here in terms of what the value of the player is. But if he won't sign a new deal, what to do? If we can somehow manage to squeeze 65 million, I think based on the current football in market, Premier League, English, it, for me that would make a bit more sense as a fee as opposed to 50 million. But United are also in for Harry Kane. We'll see if they can bring both of them to Old Trafford this summer. 
The next news is once again regarding Tammy Abraham. And Fabrizio Romano has put all in one tweet here, so there is a lot to unpack. Chelsea have 80 million euro buyback clause for Tammy Abraham valid in the summer. Tammy this season, I think, has scored six goals for Roma. We move. There's a 120 million release clause also into Goncalo Ramos Benfica contract. Napoli won't open concrete talks for Victor Osimen during the season. When I look at all three of the strikers mentioned in Fabrizio Romano's tweet here, Tammy Abraham is also wanted by Manchester United, apparently. I'm sure that will have something to do with whether or not they can get Harry Kane. Tammy Abraham, Chelsea have already had him, we sold him, and to buy him back for 80 million euros with the record that he's got, to me, doesn't make much sense at all. I love Tammy, and I liked him when he was at Chelsea, was a bit confused as to why Thomas Tuchel just froze him out of the Chelsea reckoning but we're we're not buying a proven goal scorer who is bettering himself season by season Tammy Abraham's record at Chelsea was better than it has been at Roma and Goncalo Ramos I'm hearing 120 million euro release clause I'm seeing Benfica and I'm thinking to myself here Rui Costa is going to be so sick to death of the sight of Todd Bowley and Bedadeg Bali that I think the door might well be closed for Chelsea Football Club to even consider doing business for Ramos this summer. However, comparing Tammy Abraham's goal-scoring record to Goncalo Ramos from Benfica, Ramos is hitting the kind of numbers that Victor Osimhen is hitting at Napoli. And in terms of what we saw at the World Cup, Ramos was fantastic for Portugal, brilliant for Benfica the other night, also in the Champions League. 120 million. It does to me scream a little bit Darwin Nunes, Liverpool. But then recently, you would say that Darwin Nunes is finally showing that Liverpool probably haven't wasted their money there. With Benfica, there is a constant conveyor belt of world class talent that emerges at Benfica and then they make significant profits on their players. They are a fantastically ran club. And I just think Ramos is one of those names where, at the moment, if you search for his name on Google, a lot of Manchester United links come up. So, in my video later on today, there are two other strikers who will definitely be leaving their clubs this summer that I go into much more detail on in another Chelsea-related video. So stay tuned in a few hours for that one. But Ramos, for me, I think he's a quality striker. He seems to have that grit and a little bit of an edge to him that we've also seen from successful Chelsea strikers in the past. And then Victor Osimhen. I think the more he keeps scoring, the harder it's going to be for Napoli to keep hold of him. I think this summer, in the European transfer market, there are going to be so many massive moves. There are going to be so many clubs desperate to make big-name signings. And at the minute, the Premier League... They're going to be looking at the Ramoses. They're going to be looking at Mbappe's, Harry Kane's, Victor Osimhen's players that are absolutely shining. And the Premier League clubs who have got the money to spend, your likes of Cities, your Chelsea's, Liverpool might be looking to spend again. United certainly will be looking to spend, depending on whether the Glazers block the finances or whatever. I think this is a really interesting one to watch. I think Ramos would be amazing. And I think Chelsea need to be looking. If we're going to be linked with an 80 million Abraham, we're already spending a fortune on a number nine there. And I think it's about levels here. Chelsea have either got to double down a little bit and pay an extra 50% on top and sign a Ramos or an Osimhen, or we take the cheaper option, but it's still not cheap in Tammy Abraham. So for me, this is a tough one for Chelsea. And I think a lot will come down to how other clubs, particularly if Chelsea don't get Champions League, However, other competitive clubs try and go for certain players. Chelsea might be the second choice when it comes to the big strikers on the market this summer because without Champions League football, if we don't win the Champions League, without Champions League football, it is going to be so hard for Chelsea to compete. However, with the Bowley project, we've already seen players are buying into the vision. They're buying into the project. So... Keep an eye on the three strikers mentioned in the tweet that you can see here from Fabrizio Romano on your screen. The final story that I want to discuss in this video today. Discussions will take place in the next weeks between Real Madrid and Eden Hazard's camp. His last appearance in La Liga was on September the 11th. The feeling internally is for Hazard to leave the club in the summer 
in case of a good bid slash opportunity. Now, have we just, is this me being too sentimental? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If Eden Hazard hasn't played a league game since September the 11th, even Eden Hazard at this point is surely not going to be demanding an astronomical contract at the club in which he signs for next. At Real Madrid, it hasn't worked. Injuries, being unfit, losing his place, Vinicius Jr. coming through at Real Madrid and becoming their best player. It's not been great for Eden Hazard. And I think we've heard about this now for about two or three transfer windows. This summer, it looks like Eden Hazard will be leaving. Since then, obviously, he's played even less football. He's getting even older. Is there a way that Chelsea can just bring Eden Hazard back? Don't expect much from him, but let him just enjoy Cobham again. Let him enjoy his football and maybe in the twilight years of his career, could Chelsea be the only way to get Eden Hazard interested again in his football? I think I am being very sentimental. I'm aware of that. But I think with players like Eden Hazard, players that don't train very well naturally anyway, as we have heard all of his Chelsea teammates in the past discuss, you just need to love your environment. You just need to enjoy your setting. And then I think Eden Hazard could once again not ever hit the heights that he hit before, but could certainly be a brilliant figure in the Chelsea dressing room who knows Chelsea very well, loves the club, and is idolised by many. So... Could we see this one? If we're going to lose Pulisic in the summer, we're going to lose Hakim Ziyech in the summer. Callum hudson Adoy probably going to go as well. That's three wingers. Chelsea have got to replace them. And we've got Mudrik in now. Yes, okay. We've also got Xiao Felix who can do it out wide as well. But if Mount's leaving too, that's another player who could play on the wings gone. And if the right offer was to come in, I just feel like Chelsea should do it. I really do. Give Eden another chance. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. As I said earlier, subscribe to GBFC if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And let me know which striker you would love to see Chelsea go for in the comments down below. Come on, you blues.